Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna do some work out here in the garden, weather permitting. We woke up to rain again this morning, which was awesome. It's supposed to start back up maybe in an hour or so, but I don't think it's supposed to last very long. So here's what we're gonna try to tackle. I've got those three small evergreens we recently picked up. I'm gonna plant those right now. And then I'm hoping to do a little bit more garden cleanup. I've got some buddleias, um, the skull cap, things like that that I need to cut back. And then Aaron and I are hoping to do a little bit of work on the stone walkway. So you can see what the sky is looking like, gray overcast but bringing rain, so it's lovely. And we are in the far corner of the south garden. I think we did the most amount of work on this flower bed right here. You can't tell right now, but there's so many plants in this area. You can see a couple of things I need to work on. So the skull cap is right here. Need to cut that back. Need to cut our drifts of Budlia back. I've got a drift here. Gosh, that Wichita blue juniper is gorgeous. Also have a drift of Budlia right back there. But this is what I wanted to start with first. These are the three evergreens we picked up at the garden center. Maybe it was like a week or two ago. So this one is a Push Norway spruce. All of these stay on the smaller side. So two feet tall by three feet wide. That's it. It's just this cute little spruce shrub. And I really want to focus on a lot of lower evergreen interests, especially tucking them in towards the front of beds. We've got a valley cushion mugo pine, which grows one by four. It's like a little ground cover evergreen. And then this one gets pretty wide. So this one is a Dobbs frosted juniper. It grows two feet tall, but eight feet wide. So we do need to make sure to put this in a space that can, you know, accommodate its natural size. Because this type, I mean, you can kind of tell. Its growth habit is to send out these beautiful kind of wispy architectural stems or branches. And I don't really want to put it somewhere where I'm cutting it back or needing to cut it back because I want it to maintain its natural shape. Now we do have our Biotone Starter Fertilizer. We'll be tossing some of that in the holes. And I'm using our nine inch auger, even though these are just, well, I have to use it for this size of root ball. These are one gallon cans, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it for all three. And you guys, we will link these down below, the drill and the auger. They've just been a game changer for us. So this one right here, I was thinking of tucking in, maybe probably right where that drip tube is. <laughs> that usually happens. We've got tiger eye sumacs right here, which are absolutely gorgeous. I love them. I'd love to add more in this space, maybe around that way. And then right below, we've got a bunch of daffodils and things coming up, which is exciting. And some, I think maybe, do I put, yeah, there's some tulips back in here too. But we've got the cat's pajamas nepeta in here. And then we've got echinacea right here. We need something, some kind of little evergreen in here. So I think this one will work perfect because it can just kind of fill in this little space right here. And then this one, a little bit trickier just because it stays short. So it's gotta be kind of toward the front of a bed. But again, we wanna make sure we can have the width. We've got all kinds of space in this area. I know some of you guys are planners and you know where you wanna put things and you know how you want things to come together. I have no idea how things are gonna to come together or what I'm gonna plant where. It just kind of has to evolve, which sometimes means we move plants a little bit from here to there if it's not positioned quite right as things kind of evolve. And that's just part of, it's part of my process anyway. You know, it would also look really pretty right in here. Let's set it down and take a look. Okay, yeah, that might be perfect. We've got a Corinthian linden right here. There's a pink hibiscus, I can't remember the variety name. And then the only other things I have in here right now are bulbs. Yeah, I kind of like that. And then we've got plenty of space. I mean, there's four feet all the way around it, which you just need to accommodate, you know, four foot from center. Perfect. And our last little guy. I was kind of thinking right in here. Wait a minute, what's right here? What is this? I have a plant here. What is it? <laughs> what did I put there? Oh, you know what? I bet you it's one of these hydrangeas. These are one of the quick fire, they're like the really tiny ones. I planted five, I see four there, so that must be the fifth. Is it alive? Nope. Huh, look at that. I actually think I like that better anyway. If we end up coming in with a fifth hydrangea to replace that one, we can pop it right back there. But for now, this little pine can just fill in this little space. We've got some panicum ornamental grasses right there. There's Russian sage that goes around the back of this tree. I think that'll be nice. And it'll come out to about right here. So I actually might bump the hole a little bit forward. Okay, let's get these planted. Oh, it's so cute. <gasps>
I love where each of these ended up. And even though we are gonna be getting more rain today, I am gonna grab a bucket in the end and I'm gonna water these in. I'm gonna do some clean out first before we do that. But we can't, unless we know it's gonna rain all day long, we can't uh, rely on a rainstorm that's gonna last for an hour or whatever uh, to fully saturate the root ball of these. And even though it's cool and all that business, still need to water them in. I love this little spruce. I think it's just the sweetest thing. And even though this flower bed is gonna load up with perennials here really soon, it's nice to have just a smaller evergreen in here. I mean, we've got a scotch pine right here, which those will get massive, but I want to have, you know, this kind of interest incorporated all throughout. So again, this one will get two feet tall. So right in this range and then three feet wide. So in the end, the nepeta and this one will be touching, which I kind of want. I want it to be completely full and packed out. There are bulbs in here. I kicked one of the daffodil bulbs up out of the hole. So I replanted it. Okay, next one. This little pine looks so dainty out here. Look at that. But it will fill in this space and I think it's gonna look really pretty to kind of have this be this low mat and then to have the hydrangeas right behind it. And this one grows a foot tall. Those grow about 18 inches, maybe between 18 to 24 inches. So those will just be a beautiful second story layer above this pine. So, so pretty. Now the hydrangea that I popped out of that hole, I went ahead and replanted it. I took my pruners after the stem and there is some green life in there. So we'll see what happens. It might put on some growth yet this spring. I mean, nothing's put on growth yet. So we'll give it a chance. There's a buddleia we need to cut back. And then here's the Dobbs Frosted. I really like the location of this one. With that yellow variegation, that yellow coloring in there, it gives it kind of a glow, a sparkly appearance. And it's pushed back far enough to where in the end, it'll probably come out to about here. So we've got a couple of feet to do something a little bit shorter. Junipers are the one evergreen that do exceptionally well in our area. It's the only type of evergreen that you see growing, just on occasion, you see growing out in the native landscape around here. So they just take to it really nicely. Uh, spruces are also really good. Pines do grow here um, and they grow really nicely here. They get huge, but they do needle cast a lot. We've got a Vanderwolf out here, Vanderwolf pine. And do you see all the Scyllas? I don't know if you can see all of them. Can't wait till they grow mature and fill in this space a little bit more, but they are a sweet little accent. So pines on the interior here, this is just a normal thing that they do. They just cast these out. Uh, sometimes they'll do it if they're stressed or if um, they've got some kind of a fungal disease, but there's nothing like that apparent. There's no like black spots or anything on these needles. So pines are just something that require a little bit more maintenance here because you want to come in and well, you don't have to, but I like to go come in and clean these out so that they look nice and clean. Our neighbors have some huge pines. So they're a great evergreen. They just require that little bit of extra attention. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to water those, but since we're out here with an empty trailer, I'm gonna go ahead and cut back the buddleia and the perennials that still need it. So as a quick refresh, butterfly bush or buddleias, they uh, bloom on new wood. So it's a very good idea to come out and cut them back. Oftentimes we give them a hard prune back. I'm gonna cut these back to probably about 12 to 18 inches. And then of course, tackle them in the obvious stuff, cut out anything that's broken. That way they'll stay tidy and their blooms will be somewhere where we can see them. On the larger varieties of butterfly bush, if you don't prune them, they end up with blooms just at the very tippy top of the plant and you can't see them as, as well. And you can wait to cut back your buddleias until they start to push new growth, which they usually do fairly late in the season. Uh, so since most years we have to cut ours back pretty hard anyway, I'm just gonna go in and do it. The one in the chicken coop, I just showed you guys this, this week or last week, it had started to push new leaves. It just makes it a little bit easier if you're not as familiar with the plant to see where to cut it back to a really strong set of buds and then you can kind of shape the plant from there. Okay, let's go.
right guys, I got all the buddleias done. I don't think we'll walk back through and take a look at them just because it doesn't look like much. Like I can show you one. I mean, they all kind of just look like that. I took them all down about that far. I do have several different varieties, but I treat them all the same. So now Aaron and I have one hour. How much do you think we can get done of this pathway in one hour? The, the whole rest of it. This is a project we started last spring. Was it spring? May? June? Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Feels like it was a, a year ago. Anyway, we kind of made some progress in the spring and then it all halted when it got hot because it's just too darn hot out here. There's no break from it until our trees get a little bit bigger. So we decided to pick up in the fall and start working on it a little bit, which we did. We, we made it like 30 feet, 40 feet maybe. So let me just show you the trajectory we're going for and then we're just gonna continue working on it this afternoon for the very short amount of time that we've got. Okay, so grass pathway to the flower shed in the flower garden right there. Uh, we started right here, right off the grass and just took off with these stones. I think they turned out so good. We're planning on doing, some, I don't know if we're gonna do some kind of a structure in the center here, uh, but they feel pretty comfortable, don't they, Erin? Yeah. I don't really think we're gonna have to do a whole lot. You just stepped on one that might need a little bit of mulch under it. We're not digging down and putting down a sand or gravel base. We are just setting stones on top of our, the, the compost that we use for mulch. And then we're just gonna mulch the whole area again and let it fill in all the cracks. We don't deal with a lot of freeze thaw, freeze thaw, thaw where it like heaves sidewalks and things like that. In fact, the rock pathways that my parents have in their garden have been there since we moved in in 1990 and they're still going strong. Okay, so it curves around this way and there are some areas that we figured if we found the proper stone, the proper size, we'll take some of these little ones out and, and put a bigger one in there. Over the course of the winter, you can see some of these stones kind of sloughed on the top a little bit. See that? Not bad. So it makes a curve here. I think we did a great job picking out rocks to make it look tidy on the edges. It can be a little tricky. Uh, it looks like we need to kind of thicken it yeah thicken it up so what we're going to do is we're going to continue on right here we go around around this linden and to the right of the blue spruce and then we'll end up right over here so i'm going to quit talking so we can start working <music> goodness we made it about 20 feet which I think is pretty good for just under an hour I think we were out here for about 45 minutes we ran out of time and it is starting to sprinkle a little bit so let me show you what we got done so we started just about over there and then today this is where we ended oh it looks so good I'm so so thrilled with this pathway and extra bonus I forgot there are a ton of tulips out here I don't know if you guys can see them very well but they're coming up all over the place and I can't even remember what kind they are. Does anybody remember what I, what I planted over here? They're coming up all over though. It's gonna be so glorious. Back to the pathway. So it started getting a little weird right here. So I think we're gonna be taking out these right here so we can put in a larger stone. Uh, but we'll tackle that the next time we have a chance to come out here. And we'll bring you guys along for the rest of this pathway construction because you guys have been in it for the long haul at this point. Look at this pathway. It's just so pretty and it's very easy to navigate. I mean, it's really walkable. Let's walk back the other direction. You can see the curve. I also need to check the curve over here because I think, yeah, I think right here. See, we'll kind of smooth that out as well. It always gets a little bit weird right at the very end because, you know, as you're working on it, you kind of swap pieces around and, you know, uh, maybe for another piece that you find because they're all irregular. So sometimes you, you know, you'll run into a piece three, four layers down that works better than one of the others that you've already laid. But I used my foot and kind of drew out the rest of this. 
So it'll, it won't go off to the right quite as much. It'll kind of do a more of a gentle thing right here. And then you can kind of see how it goes out in that direction. And I'm thinking it might be nice to have some benches along this so you can kind of look in this way. There's just so many possibilities for this space out here. And I think they called this Oklahoma bluestone. Is that right? This is the same stone that we used in the Hartley, except for it was snapped. That's the technical term, I guess. They can cut stone to where it doesn't look cut by a machine. Uh, it has more rough edges like, and a little bit more irregular edges like the rocks out here, except for they're snapped into rectangle and square pieces, roughly. And when we ordered that stone, they also ordered in, uh, down at Ontario Rock and Landscape, which is where we get all of this, they ordered in a bunch of pellets of all this, uh, like, flagstone, and we bought a ton of pellets. <laughs> we just thought, you know what? Uh, since we like the color of the stone and we like how it's um, handling everything here, we may as well pick up the pallets when they have them so that if we want to create, and it's not if, it's when we want to create new pathways in our gardens, we can have the same stone throughout our garden. And I think that that will be nice in the end. Very, very happy with today's progress. So anyway, that is it for today. I'm really happy that we were able to get some things in the ground. That feels so good. Aaron and I were just talking today about how it's just the most wild spring ever, uh, but boy, it's just opened up our schedule to be able to get some other things done. So hopefully we can uh, continue to tackle this pathway so that when we really start planting uh, and you know things heat up in that department we can start putting things in to soften the edges around this pathway and really start developing this space. Anyway thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye!